either I feel what you feel or I don't let you in my headspace at all so that I don't understand anything that you're feeling. Welcome to the BPD Bunch. I'm your host, Sani, and today I am here with Katya, Jack, Madurama, and Jay. Where in the world is everyone coming from today? West Midlands, United Kingdom. Atlanta, Georgia, USA. I'm from Kolkata in India. Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And I'm coming from New Mexico in the United States. Today we are going to be talking about quite a contentious topic in the VPD community, which is empathy. If you are interested in this and other BPD related topics, please don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your notifications to make sure that you never miss anything from the BPD bunch. Talking about empathy today, we are thinking about the different kinds of empathy and it's generally accepted that there are three broad categories of empathy. The first one being effective empathy which tends to be the kind of empathy that springs to mind when we talk about empathy as a whole. So effective empathy is the ability to relate on an emotional level to another person often to the extent of taking on their emotions as your own. So for example if somebody is upset, if they are sad, being able to actually tangibly experience that emotion alongside them The second type is cognitive empathy. So cognitive empathy is about being able to logically understand why somebody feels the way that they do, but you are not necessarily taking on the emotional load of sharing that person's emotions. The third one is kind of a middle ground between the two, and that is compassionate empathy. And that is the ability to understand and share emotions, but in a healthy way. So you are not blurring the lines between you and the other person, and it doesn't compromise your own mental state. So when we discuss those three types of empathy, that is what we are discussing. Can you share an experience where you felt a strong emotional reaction to someone else's feelings? How did that affect your behavior or responses in the situation? I think effective empathy was my default. I thought it made me a kinder person and a better friend, but the reality was far from it because, you know, I was able to like comfort people. I fed off that because it made me feel needed. And it made me feel like people want me to be their friend. For the majority part of my life, I mean, the kind of environment I grew up in, you should not be very open with your emotions. I mean, I, if you let the world know that how you're feeling about a certain type of things, then you are essentially giving them power over you. So you just do not let the world know how you feel. You just keep it inside and make a facade and like go through the day so that nobody knows what's going inside you. But like a few years before I got diagnosed, that was maybe when I was like 16, 17 years old. And I had like a best friend. She was talking to me about a very personal problem she was going through. It was about her family and like her relationship and love life, but it was like a very messy situation. She had lost somebody in her life. She had to cut some people off. And I remember she started sobbing and I felt like I had to take responsibility for her pain as if her pain was my pain. And I needed to do something about that to help her, to prove that I'm a good enough friend. That is probably when I started realizing that how much of my self-work was attached to how well I was able to empathize with someone. And that is why learning cognitive empathy has been so helpful for me because other than that, I used to split a lot. Either I feel what you feel, either all of your feelings are my feelings or I don't acknowledge anything you feel. It was always in between these two. Before I tell my story, I had to give a little bit of backstory to my overall experience of empathy. Um, I've mostly, over the course of my life, felt effective empathy, and I had to learn cognitive empathy more manually. 
Um, and until learning cognitive empathy, effective empathy didn't serve me that well most of the time. I did have the capacity to be compassionate towards people if they expressed a positive emotion or as long as they weren't super, super close to me, if they brought me some sort of issue, I would go to the ends of the earth to help them try to deal with it. But the closer somebody was to me, in certain cases of negative emotion, I would not be able to distinguish between their emotion and mine. And if I figured out that it wasn't actually just my emotion, I would end up lashing out at them for making me feel a certain way. And one of the times that I can remember is in the earlier days of my relationship with my husband, Casey was working on his car in the garage. And then all of a sudden I heard, a string of curses and then silence and then some shuffling around and then a string of curses and I am starting to get frustrated because I feel his frustration in the garage and I mean sure we could say that cursing out your car is maybe not the most effective way of dealing with your frustration uh, but I do think we all can agree that that situation had nothing to do with me personally. It wasn't directed at me in any way, shape or form. My response was to go in there and curse him out for his whole emotional reaction to what he was doing, which was definitely not an effective way of dealing with the situation. It's kind of funny because anger is an emotion that historically I have felt very comfortable with because it's one that makes me feel like I am in control. But in this particular situation, I think what had me so fired up was it felt like I had to be extra angry to take control back from the fact that I was feeling somebody else's anger, which didn't feel like it was in my control at all. So if I'm feeding off of somebody else's anger, then I will like try to outdo it as a way to get control back. And it's very difficult for me to have any sort of cognitive or compassionate empathy for them because I feel so personally affronted by their emotions. For me, I've always had quite a difficult relationship with empathy. And I think a large proportion of that is down to having my schizotypal personality disorder comorbidity because it does make my emotions in general pretty shallow and that includes empathy. It's just kind of lumped in with everything else. So with BPD, I have a few emotions that I feel really intensely and I will be up and down constantly between those, but then everything else is pretty flat and I think when you combine that with the blunted affect, it does cause me quite a lot of problems with empathy because in general, I do feel quite disconnected from people and from what's going on around me. And that makes it very difficult to form an emotional connection with anyone. I mean, it is possible. I can do it with a select few people, but I wouldn't really say it was effective empathy as such if someone is upset in front of me I will generally find it really awkward and not really know what to do and actually probably just want to remove myself from that person because I'm so ill at ease with people expressing emotion and also the fact that I know that I don't have that empathy and it's expected from me in a almost performative way and then I can't give it I know it makes the other person feel bad so yeah I have a really difficult relationship with it and it's not nice for me and it's not nice for the other person either so when people talk about effective empathy I actually find it really interesting because I experience something so different to what most people with BPD do and whether or not that's down to the STPD or whether it's just you know me as a person I don't know I can't explain it I don't really understand it but I definitely think that empathy is so different for everyone with BPD. Um, yesterday, actually, a family friend, my uncle, passed. I call, I talked to both his children, to two of his children yesterday, and his son. First time in my life that I've known him. I've known him since he was a snot-nosed little kid. Um, we grew up together. It was the first time I seen him actually cry, 
and um, I have seen hear him ever cry, and it was and it's it's been weighing heavy on my mind because that was my uncle as well. So, what was your emotional reaction to seeing other people's grief? I feel it. I I feel it because not only because I also have connected to it, but I feel it because I. I know this. I know this person. He he's one of the immensely and just he's one of the most confident people I've known my whole life. It, it was rough to, to to see him like that. So would you say then that like the grief of the other people is sort of compounding on top of what you're already feeling? Yeah, I would say that exactly. Well, I did just want to tell you, Jack. Also, I'm sorry for your loss. That's uh, it's a rough oh, yeah. thing to go through. Thank you. I have a pretty different relationship, I think, with empathy than most other people um, that we've heard from so far. I have never really been in a position where I've taken on the emotion of somebody else. If I have, so very rare occasions that I can't even think of that, may, you know, examples of when that has happened so clearly for me. I think I usually start from the middle space, um, actually, of like compassionate empathy. I think that's usually my starting point. I think I think I'm lucky that that's my starting point. I think my emotions would have been even more traumatizing if they, uh, you know, were more intensely um, effective empathy. But I think that for me, empathy has always been a a tool that's allowed me to really enhance my capacity to be a a supportive friend without taking on um, the challenges of the other person. I've had friends that have gone through a lot of things and I've been able to support them without it draining me in any way or causing a significant rift between me and my friends. I think on the flip side, if there was one example that I could give of maybe a way that that doesn't hold so true. I think I really struggle with anger. If somebody is angry or very frustrated around me, that I think is maybe one case where I tend to absorb that and either become defensive or in in another way reactive very quickly, even if it's not directed at me. So give give my mother, for for example, my mom works a lot. She can be very stressed out. I always had huge clashes with her because I wouldn't, you know, her vibe, the way that she spoke to me sometimes, even if she meant absolutely nothing by it, I would absorb that and immediately bash back. So I think that's one maybe... uh, separate isolated kind of example where i am not so good but in most other respects i think i'm I'm usually sitting in that middle space have you ever experienced a sudden shift from feeling empathetic towards someone to feeling anger or frustration and what do you think triggers that change for you and for for me like one one that i thought was kind of unique is disgust I have had some friendships with people in the past, uh, often men, who they weren't directly doing anything romantic towards me, but they would, they like, we'd be having a great time and then they'd just get a little bit too close in my bubble. And like, I'd be feeling empathetic and like, we're having a great moment as friends. And then they step too close in my bubble and this disgust thing would activate. And I often felt like I completely lost the ability to be a kind person. I was so cruel to some of these friends in that moment because I would just get such a strong, like I literally felt sick inside, like, like, I cannot. And and, and it it just felt kind of like an uncontrollable demon took over my body. And I, I'm not trying to not take ownership for that because of course everything in my body is me. I really did not understand what was going on in the moment. It's only in retrospect that I can really recognize, like, I am very specific with my physical space bubble. And there are some people where if you cross that boundary, it's over. And so now I'm I'm much more aware of that. And I'm able to be kinder to people and just either take a step back or tell them. But yeah, that was oddly disgust was a big one that triggered that switch for me. When I was working at Waffle House doing night shifts, 
And if anybody watching this is ever worked at Walt Palace or Nicers, they would know that it is a very stressful environment. It sucks. You're tired. You're you are now you 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 your coworkers become become close because of that stress and that tiredness. So you know, so you become almost sympathetic towards each other because you know what each other are going through. Well, one night my cook decided she wanted to start blaming me for things that she messed up on. And after I tried to, you know, tell her, do not blame me for something that you messed up on. It's not my fault. You did it. We're no we're both tired. You know, I understand, you know, you she has children, she had children she had to take care of, you know, during the day. So you know, I understand you're tired. This is your, this is your fourth night working a row night. Please don't blame me. And she kept doing it. And I turned around and sp- and broke a broom over the low bar at, at Waffle House and pointed, broke it in towards her and told her to leave me the F alone. And I walked out. Wow, that is definitely quite a shift. <laughs> Hitting the skills breakdown point. Yeah. A lot of my self-worth was associated with how good a person I can be and how good a friend I can be. And that also depended a lot on how much I can empathize. I was not really taking care of myself or like I did not know what my boundaries are. I did not know how much I was able to give people. So I was pouring from an empty vessel like very clearly and like right when I went to therapy I realized how much of an upper hand I've given to some people in my life who were not necessarily in my life for friendship or love but they were just trying to take advantage of me because whenever they would feel emotionally overwhelmed they would come to me or like call me up and say like you know all the stuff that they were feeling But that never happened the other way around. So right after I got to therapy and I understood that, yes, I was being walked over like very cruelly. So that was kind of a major shift in like how I started to view people because back then I did not have the skills to actually understand when I'm splitting, when I'm idealizing someone, when I'm devaluing someone. I did not have that emotional capacity to understand that, but I noted this very strict change it was I became very very closed up with people I mean I had absolute I went from having zero boundaries to like you know very tight walls around me so like even when some friends would come up even when I was not like very emotionally drained I would be like I need this night to myself so I can call you up maybe the next day or the day after tomorrow but but that is not a nice thing to say to someone who is like going through an emergency at that point of time. So that is a really black and white thing I had going like right right at the beginning of getting diagnosed. It was like either I feel what you feel or I don't let you in my headspace at all so that I don't understand anything that you're feeling. I think for me, I experience a very simplified version of this. So, I mean, I've spoke you know, the episodes about splitting and how, for me, there's no real extremes of emotion involved. It's just general disconnect and when I'm done, I'm done type thing. So, yeah, I mean, one of the things that I do do is preemptively split. So especially if I can see abandonment might potentially be on the horizon, I'll start to distance myself from that person so actually splitting isn't really instantaneous very often it's actually like a process that's instigated by you know fear of abandonment primarily but yeah for me it's just it is just a switch it's like I care or I don't like it takes quite a lot for me to have an attachment or to care about someone and then whatever it is that happens and it can be something really minor or you know like something that stems from paranoia for example But once that switch is gone, it's, yeah, it's done, which is not very empathetic. I can be very empathetic until I sort of perceive that somebody maybe is not helping themselves in a situation. And then I can get very irritated very quickly, which is not very empathetic in reality, because obviously if somebody's going through something at the time, 
maybe they don't have the capacity to to address it right there and then and and i guess that is indicative of uh, you trying to be the problem solver when that's not necessarily your role in being the supportive friend at that time so i've had many instances however where that's happened and i would say i control the frustration pretty well but inside it's a very strong feeling of like you're just talking to me 24 7 about the same problem and i'm giving you possible solutions or support for this and you are intentionally doing the opposite so i feel like i'm getting slightly tired and i feel like with a lot of these topics and this one is is no different I feel like it's a very fine line, isn't it? Between like, when are you sort of exploiting my energy and not being reasonable and just kind of draining me, maybe even unintentionally? Uh, and when is it, you know, the case that I just need to be more empathetic and understand that you're going through something and maybe you can't fix it right now. And who draws those lines? And where, when can you reasonably define that they've been crossed? It's not very straightforward to answer. Yeah, I think that's what's so difficult about a lot of these topics and why context, and like not just the context of the moment, but the overall context of a relationship is so important because it's, it's not always cut and dry. You can't always say, like, in these situations, this is exactly, you know, you know, this is the exact split of the onus of the situation, right? Like, even my reactions, if my husband is being outwardly aggressive about something that doesn't have anything to do with me, the kernel of truth in that is, you know, it's not fun to be around somebody who's throwing a fit in the garage because they can't get, they can't figure out what to do with their car. Like, empathy or not, like... Emotions are contagious just by the nature of how humans work and negative emotions, especially so. And it's, it's, you know, it's not fun to be around someone who's angry, right? Like that's, that's, that's totally valid. And, and, and so that the nuance of handling those situations is really difficult. And I think for me personally, it's always just been a matter of trying to avoid the extremes because I have a tendency to be like, it's either entirely your fault or it's entirely my fault. And I understand why the tendency to be that way, it's simpler. It feels easier if you can just put it all in a box somewhere, but that's very rarely reality. <laughs> this actually reminds me of um, a situation I'm pretty sure we've all been in. We've had that one friend who always calls you about that same dude they keep having problems with over and over and over, like, dump them I was that girl or whoever, or whoever whether it's a man or female dump them leave them do not call me I you need it next time you call me I, I, I'm I'm sending the I'm sending the most messed up text to it to that still said individual to make them want to leave you so your toys oh yeah I was that girl and funnily enough because I was that girl I'm the one friend that if you have that problem you can talk about it to death with me because I spent two years trying to get over my one of my relationships. I would have hung up on you guys. I, I, I started doing that <laughs> to my friends who do that. Like, I just like, nope, not again, fine. <laughs> well, we all have different talents, right? <laughs> what strategies have you found effective in moderating empathy and how that affects how you react to other people? For me, because like I said, I tend to absorb a lot of emotions, so it's being very careful about who I pull pull around and what what their emotional state is like. Because if I'm with somebody who's always in, who's always an emotional wreck, I'll always be an emotional wreck. If I'm somebody who's always mostly stunted or cold, I'll always be emotionally empathetically cold. So I have to choose about who I be around, who I let influenced by emotions and not the naked jazz. I think for me the starting point was actually not really beating myself up too much about the fact that I don't have much effective empathy because I did feel that I was a bit of an anomaly because I think society prizes empathy as a quality in people and when you don't necessarily possess that or possess it in abundance you do feel 
maybe shamed and guilty a little bit when it's not something that's integral to your character or it's not innate and for a lot of us obviously we have had to learn cognitive empathy and that's how we empathize as do I but I think as well for me I always think about this concept of phrenesis which is something that I came across when I was doing my master's and it's basically defined as like practical wisdom so knowing what to do in any given situation so it's kind of like common sense basically and I feel like as long as I'm working on that then I don't really need to worry so much about effective empathy because I understand what I need to do to be a good friend even if I don't have effective empathy there's other things that I can do to show people that I care about them and I think that's important and one of the things that I've always said is working on emotional intelligence so I might not have empathy in abundance but I can look at other people and kind of see where they're at emotionally I can recognize it in them and then respond to it appropriately so there is kind of a scaffold there to cope with not having effective empathy because at the end of the day if I don't have it I don't have it and there's not really much I can do about that but it doesn't mean that I'm a bad person because I can still work around it if that makes sense one thing actually that I would say which is totally random but reading a lot like reading books actually really helps you to understand people like across all genres so that actually helped me be more empathetic because I could experience empathy through the characters like that may or may not work for other people but for me I found that really useful I think uh actually books help me a lot too and um, like uh and any kind of media really like books and music being the topmost when I was not aware that I was an effective empathizer. I did not realize this, but in hindsight, I couldn't consume any media which did not relate to me or to my personal life in any extent. Even if I'm listening to some song, if there is like one sentence in that song which does not align with how I think about love or how I think about life or relationships in general, I would get this very weird judgy self of mine and it would be like uh, you don't stand by it so why are you listening to it and I mean that's not the reason people consume like art is it when I actually found like a subtle sense of who I am at my core I think that helped me understand cognitive empathy so much better because I realized that I did not have to be a good friend to like always take the burden of their emotions. Sometimes I might understand their problems, sometimes I might not, but I don't have to understand everything just to support my friends, right? So cognitive empathy, I think, comes there when you're like you try to understand where the person is coming from even though you do not understand the whys and the hows but and you're there to support them so i think that is what like i learned a few years back and i'm still learning i mean i have a lot of trouble in there but i think like separating myself from others is like the key step in doing it and like books and music like has been the stepping stone for me I think for me there are a couple of different sides to this because even though I've mostly talked about how effective empathy has made it hard for me to be compassionate towards people, I have also found that I have gone above and beyond in ways that were problematic because I empathized with people. And so I think the first thing that has been really helpful for me is just recognizing what I can and can't realistically take on, and also whether or not somebody wants me to, because I've had a tendency to stick my nose in things that were really not my business, and people weren't actually asking me to solve their problems for them. I just felt so deeply for them, and I wanted to be useful in some way that I would overextend myself. Um, but in terms of how I manage my emotional reactions so that I'm able to stay compassionate towards other people, I think it's two DBT skills, which I will write full descriptions for in the description down below. But the stop skill, which essentially just helps me take a step back and then checking the facts, because so much of the time I have really struggled 
to slow things down enough to figure out what's actually going on. And I would just lash out at people for the emotions that they were either bringing to me via their own emotional pathways or something that they were setting off in me because of uh, my own reaction. I just really struggled when I feel emotionally activated to hold space for other people. And so the stop skill and checking the facts skills really, really helped me to be able to slow things down and think things through so that I could have more effective relationships with people. And most of the time in most of my relationships, pretty much everyone except for my husband, these things now come to me automatically second nature. It's really only my relationship with my husband and, and maybe like my closest friends if I'm really sick and I'm like my vulnerability factors are, you know, I'm drowning in vulnerabilities, then I might be a little bit um, really struggle with it. But it's, it's really mostly just in my relationship with my husband that this comes up at all anymore. I'm somebody that tends to um, be overly attentive to the point that it can sometimes uh, feel like I'm adding a weight to my shoulders, even if I'm not directly taking on the emotion. And I think something that's been really important to me over the years is to develop an understanding and appreciation for the fact that there are different ways to be supportive and not all of them entail having anything to do with the actual issue that the person is experiencing like for example sometimes just being present joking around I remember back to the episode that we filmed with uh, my uh, best friend, Georgia. One of the ways that she used to help me get through bad moments was coming to my room and dancing around like an idiot. And immediately I wasn't so bothered and upset about something uh, that was going on at the time anymore. And those things can be equally as powerful um, and also can convey empathy because it shows that you understand that somebody's just not in a good place uh, at the time uh, and equally understand that maybe you just don't have the capacity tools or whatever else to to do anything about it or maybe just simply shouldn't because it's not your place you know there are other ways to express empathy and and to be supportive and attentive that don't involve uh, you like fixing the problem how do you think your perception of empathy has been shaped by your experiences with bpd and are there any nuances you've come to understand over time i'm not sure if it's specifically to do with bpd but I do feel like it's given me pause for thought in a lot of ways because one of the things I was thinking about when I was considering the topic of empathy is whether or not my lack of empathy is anything to do with the personality disorders or actually whether it might be environmental because when I was reflecting on it and thinking about my home environment, neither of my parents are particularly empathetic and that doesn't mean that they're horrible people that they're abusive anything like that it's just that they struggle with that human connection to other people probably one more so than the other and would probably admit that so it's hard for me to know how much of it is down to personality disorder or whether it's kind of learnt from my environment and that's where it's come from so I think that's quite an interesting question and also thinking as well about growing up like I haven't always lived in the UK I have lived in a country which is maybe known for being slightly less expressive than what the UK is and I think a lot of it as well comes down to what's around you so yeah I find it actually really a difficult question to answer in relation to myself because I do think that there are other things that are at play as well yeah, I mean, a lot of these are ultimately kind of a guess, right? It's it's a reflection upon life, but it's hard to know. There's so many variables that go into what we become as time goes on that, that sometimes it can be pretty difficult to figure out what comes from where. A couple of things that I learned through my journey with BPD is that sometimes we have to think about what we're trying to get across when we're expressing our empathy for another person. There were times um, early on where I wasn't listening so much to what the other person needed or, or perceived or felt that they needed in that moment. I was doing what 
my idea of fixing the problem or addressing the concern was and that wasn't always there as in fact sometimes it could have the opposite effect of making them feel more overwhelmed or pushed away because it was too much to, to process for them whatever I, whatever I was doing even if it was a positive thing and I think something else that I learned is that before we start trying to be compassionate towards other people and having empathy for other people is that we need to have it for ourselves and there are lots of moments um, in, early on in my journey with BPD where um, because I wasn't showing myself and giving myself those resources um, I wasn't able to really give them effectively to other people um, and it ended up creating lots of interpersonal conflicts because my capacities were just so low um, and it took me a really long time to understand that that was, go was what was going on. So uh, something that I have learned in my BPD journey is it's very important to understand who you invest your energy into and how much you invest that energy because not all people are relying on you because they think that you're a friend or because they care about you or because they rely on you, but they're just doing that because you were essentially being a doormat like I was. But as I have grown into the person I am today and I know who my friends are, I know enough to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're not going to take advantage of me. It's like... Jay said, like, you cannot pour from an empty vessel. So you have to take care of ourselves before you start taking care of others. And this is a note to myself, but my self-worth is not dependent on how much I can take other people's pain away or how good am I able to empathize with their feelings. I mean, I am my own person and I'm defined by a lot of other things apart from the ability to like, you know, quote unquote, help people by just like feel all their feelings because it doesn't help me. It doesn't help them. It does not help anybody. For me, I guess it, it made me realize what I want to put my energy towards because I, I, I deal with, I deal with a lot of low energy all the time. I'm usually mildly depressed most of, most days if you don't have the energy to take care of yourself you don't have the energy to sympathize, to sympathize with somebody else it is really i I learned to i learned what is what is important enough to put my energy in because if i'm already empty if i'm already tapped out i'm not going to be any good for somebody else who may who what may need if somebody to actually em sympathize empathize with them like then and there so yeah it's just it's just like it's just learning know what is important to you right now and what you want to be using in. yeah learning like to not overextend yourself is super important because i i definitely learned the hard way that like uh, agreeing to do more than you actually have the capacity to often ends up being worse off than if you had never agreed to to do it in the first place um for me, I think the most important thing that I learned about empathy through my BPD experience is just that like, what people colloquially mean when they say showing empathy is not necessarily the same thing as the individual subcategories of empathy. And what I think most people mean when they say showing empathy is compassionate empathy, being able to honor yourself and hold space for others at the same time. But I always thought that just because I had a lot of effective empathy, that meant I was a very empathetic person. It turns out that just being strongly affected by someone else's emotion does not automatically mean that you have the capacity or the skills to be compassionate towards them in all moments. And I think that was probably one of the more painful lessons that I had to learn because I thought that I was... Like, I'm this sponge, and I take on everyone else's emotions, and doesn't that make me such an amazing, connected human? But so many other people experienced me as being, me, 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 it's all about how I feel, and your emotions are affecting me, instead of me actually genuinely showing compassion for them. So I think learning to be able to truly show compassion for people, compassionate empathy for people, no matter how I have been affected by their... Emotions has been a really big process, and yeah, I'm doing much better with it now. 
thank you everyone so much for watching. We hope you got a nugget of wisdom to take with you on your journey. Friday, we will be back talking about the borderline empathy paradox. And then next week, we'll be back with a brand new episode topic. If you can't wait until next week, our top two tiers on Patreon, our BPD buddies and our BPD besties already have early access and theirs is an exclusive extended cut. So if you'd like access to our early release extended cut episodes, head on over to Patreon link down below and sign up for our BPD buddies or BPD besties tier. We'll see you next time.